Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus, viewers and subscribers. Another video. Bless the name of Jesus. I had to do a part two. I was led by the Spirit to do a part two, by the Holy Ghost. And um, the Lord used two persons to confirm that I need to do a part two. In the comment section also, you know, questions have been asked. And so I have to do you know, what the Lord desire at this time. Why is it so important for a video like this, bless the name of Jesus, at this time, is that we are now heading, my brothers and sisters, into uncharted territory, bless the name of Jesus. We are all about to go somewhere, in some form, where we have never been before I remember when the Lord said to Joshua, Joshua, when Moses was dead, the Lord said, You will you are now going somewhere that you have never been. This is what is going to happen. We are the remnant are concerned. As I mentioned about going places that we have never been, my brothers and sisters, it's important for us to be concerned about CERN. The 5th of July, I guess most of my viewers and subscribers must be aware that this, this gigantic machine is about to be turned on again. Bless the name of Jesus. They are seeking to open a portal to cross over from our side to their side. They are seeking to create a gateway. My God Almighty, one of the scientists said that they can't wait to see what will enter from that side. My God. Brothers and sisters, we are to be prepared. And the only one who will equip us to endure, the only one who will equip us to stand in these times, is the blessed Holy Ghost. The word of God says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, then the spirit will lift up a standard against it or against him. So my brothers and sisters, my remnant family, who would want to be ordinary in this time? Like when Jesus, at the age of 29, had never done a noted miracle in his life. He was just a regular carpenter. Jesus needed a move, my God. Bless the name of Jesus. And he was anointed to enter, bless the name of Jesus, into something else as he walked the earth in victory. Bless the name of Jesus. We are all remnant. We must all be prepared, fully appeared, prepared, sorry. We must all be fully equipped, my God, for what is coming so that we too will walk in victory in the mighty name of Jesus. And so as I continue, I want to go into um, Corinthians, Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 12. Um, 13 and few verses from 1st Corinthians 14 three chapters and we are going to be looking at a few things that will have uh, um, some of my viewers and subscribers a bit off in error and so I'm doing this video to open the understanding by the help of the Holy Spirit to all my viewers and subscribers and i am praying that the holy spirit will guide me in a way that if i have a seven year old uh, viewer watching this video they will understand clearly what the word is saying and so i have a brother that asked me in the comment section um first he said that i must be it could be a she i must be careful uh, um, of what I present um, before having full knowledge of what I'm presenting. And um, 
this individual or you know go ahead to say i must be careful of what i say about patterns because and he asks a question where in the bible did jesus speak in tongues and so if you watch my video again the first video on the holy spirit as i focus on jesus my main focus my brothers and sisters was on Oh, Jesus was regular. He was ordinary before he was anointed in River Jordan. Bless the name of Jesus. And, you know, when I think about the question, there are quite a few believers that believe that, you know, he spoke on the cross at the ninth hour. And why many carry that view is because it was in a different language. And the verse that, that would, would, would bring substance to that belief is that when he spoke, those at the, who was there and heard him, they thought that they, they knew what he was saying. They said, he's, he's calling out for El Elias. Or other translation says Elijah, you know, but the word of God interprets it where it says he was crying out for his God. Why art thou forsaken me? And so where Jesus spoke in tongues at the river Jordan immediately when he was anointed, when the Holy Spirit like a dove descend upon him. He was anointed without measure. That part of the Bible for me was silent. But we have to be careful, my brothers and sisters, because it was not recorded that he spoke in tongues um, at the baptism in the river immediately when the Holy Spirit descended upon him. And the voice said, This is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. Um, be careful of, you know, how we try um, to put everything on trial to the point that the truth will be before you and you miss the truth. Because the Bible is silent. We have never read where when Jesus was praying, he was praying in his prayer language. It's not recorded. But you think that we should run the risk. To, 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 to believe that, 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 that Jesus has never um, prayed in tongues. He has never prayed in another language. When he was away from his disciples, away alone in the wilderness, uh, uh, um, seeking his, his, his father strength. I'm going to show you, even when Paul was filled with the Holy Ghost, the Bible too is silent. Nowhere in the record show you where when Paul was filled with the Holy Ghost, he spoke in tongues. But at the end of the day, Paul made it clear that I speak more than all of you. Bless the name of Jesus. So there are things in the Bible that are silent. The most important thing, my brothers and sisters, is for us to understand what took place at the first church. Some people call it the first church. The New Testament church begins with the apostle in the upper room. The first move of the New Testament church, bless the name of Jesus, was the 120 in the upper room. Bless the name of Jesus. That was the first move. The first move was upon the Jews. Bless the name of Jesus. Let's, let's focus. If we want to talk about pattern, let's focus on the first move. And I'm doing this video, my brothers and sisters, in love. Because we need to all understand what we need. We need the gift. We all need the gift. And so, Peter, let's begin at Peter. I'm uh, sorry, Acts 2 verse 38. You hear what it says? Acts 2 38 says, 
Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You hear what he says? It's a process. He says, Baptize every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the gift. Now, if you look at that, the gift, there's no S on it. The gift, the gift of the Holy Ghost. You know what verse 39 says? For the promise is unto you. This was the promise that Jesus made. I must go. If I don't go to the disciples, Jesus said. If I don't die, if I don't go, then this gift cannot come. This, this promise, you will not be able to receive this promise while I am here on earth. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call, even on this video. Bless the name of Jesus. This gift is for you. If you have never received this gift, don't worry. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. When you look around at um, Acts 9, Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way, as thou comest, had sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And if you read down, if you read down, you saw where immediately things started to happen to Paul. But again I say, it doesn't show you where Paul speak. Um, but we all know the rest of the story concerning Paul. Um, keep in mind, gift. The gift is the promise. The gift is the Holy Ghost. You must receive the gift first. Bless the name of Jesus. Acts 19 says, He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? Here was um, seven, because, uh, sorry, look, 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 sorry, look at verse seven in Acts 19. And all the men were about 12. So there were 12 disciples. They were already called disciples. They were already called disciples. Twelve disciples. Because, you know, we are in a time where everybody is a Christian. We are in a time, you know, where everybody, you know, is, 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 is a part of the kingdom. You know. So, these were disciples. You know, that we don't get confused right here. They were officially disciples. But there was something that was needed. They needed a move. They, they needed a move, my brothers and sisters. And they said unto him, We have not, in verse 2, And they said unto him, "We." This was Paul. And we have not so much as heard whether there is any Holy Ghost. There are people in the world, there are brothers and sisters out there who have never heard this teaching. They said that since we have been disciples, just like Cornelius and his household, they, we have never heard anything as much as there's a Holy Ghost. My God. And so, the word of God says, And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues, and prophesy immediately. 
And so if this was not an importance, if this, if, if, if there wasn't any urgency needed for this, and if we go back to Acts 8, read Acts 8, when Philip did a great evangelistic work, my God, and, and, and many were saved. The Bible said that when Peter and John, the elder, oh God, Peter, they, 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 they left where they were and they went to join with Philip. And when Peter, they, 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 they reached where they were going, they, they, they came up with Philip. They said, Peter asked, have they received the Holy Ghost? Have they received? Okay, Philip, they are saved. They are saved. Uh, we are happy that, that they, are, they, are, they are now part of the, 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 the army of God. They have given their lives to Jesus. But have they received the Holy Ghost? And the answer was no. And the word of God in Acts, it says, And Peter laid his hand, he prayed and laid his hand upon them, and they, 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 they all were filled with the Holy Ghost. Talking about pattern. And so, if we can just look at the fact of where the first church, the New Testament church begins with the apostle, the upper room, where they had was to wait. Jesus says, you cannot afford to move. You cannot afford to miss this. You must tarry at the at Jerusalem. You must tarry. You cannot make a move before the Holy Spirit move. You must receive this gift. You know why? Because out of this gift comes many gifts. Gifts. The S, the S will eventually come about. You cannot be a part of the gifts without the gift. And so that is where, you see, Paul, Paul was very intelligent. Paul was one of the most learned apostles. And even though Paul says, I forget, I, I put all of those things behind me. I count them as dung. In his humility, bless the name of Jesus. Let us not um, believe that what Paul did was abundant, um, is brilliance in even how he presented himself. You know why? What Paul simply was doing was just acknowledging that there is a higher level of intelligence in the Holy Spirit. And so what he did, he put the regular behind him and accept the higher level of intelligence, of knowledge, the all-knowing God who was now living through Paul through the power of the Holy Ghost. And, and so, as we go into Paul's writing, we are here we find we are um, few of, well, believers read and, 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 and get shown off by misinterpreting, by misunderstanding, by being on the surface with what is said. And they run away with the wrong belief by just being on the surface. And I'm not saying this um, in a disrespectful um, way. You know, I am just trying to share, you know, things that can let us be caution at times. Take caution. None of us is perfect. And so when we read the word, we have to read it a hope in mind. Because if we don't, we are going to be searching for something to strengthen our belief. But where the word of God is, uh, uh, is it, it remains true. Now, hear what Paul says in Corinthians 12. He says, at the beginning, he says, No concerning spiritual gifts. You hear that? No concerning spiritual gifts, 
G I F T S S gifts. There cannot be gifts without the gift, the promise, the, 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 the main gift. The Holy Ghost is one. But when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, the gift that was promised by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then out of that birth many gifts. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. I would not have you ignorant. So Paul in the spirit knew that there would be many confusion concerning topics like these. And so he continued, he said, he know that he were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as he were led. Verse 3, wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by speaking by the Spirit of God called Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost, the gift. Verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, G-I-F-T-S, but the same Spirit. You hear this? But the same Spirit, the one Spirit. There are diversities of gifts. There are diversities mean many gifts, but... Bless the name of Jesus. By the same Spirit. These gifts, these diversities of gifts come from the same Spirit. Comes from the promise. Bless the name of Jesus. And there are difference of administration. But the same Lord. There are difference in administration. But the same Lord. And there are diversities of um, operation. But it is the same God which worketh all in all. And so the difference in administration means. Um, we are, we are, we are, we are, oh, we are the church administrate. You know, maybe you have elders, you have prophets, you have bishops and all these people. Oh, the church administrate. Uh, maybe you have the, the evangelistic team. You have the women's fellowship. You have the men's fellowship. Um, you have all the different ministries that you can think of. But it's one Lord. And so you would not, what Paul was saying, just like out of one spirit come, dive, out of one gift come diversities of gifts. He was saying, out of another example, I tell you, Paul was just so brilliant in this writing. You know what Paul says? Out of one Lord comes many different kind of administration. None of these would not exist, make any sense. Without the Lord Jesus Christ. And he goes further to say. And there are diversities of um, operations. But it is the same God which worketh all in all. Diversities of operation. But it's the same God. It's like you have an hotel. Or a chain of hotel. It, 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 it's 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 one operation many they have hotels all over the world but at the same time you have only one owner one owner but 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 it brings forth many operations bless the name of jesus and so you have um the baptist the the the, the apostolic you have, um, you can help me, the New Testament. You have the 
Adventists, you have the Seventh-day Adventists, you have the Seventh-day Church of God, and you, you name it. But it's one God. One God. Follow, follow what is happening, my brothers and sisters. And so, Paul goes further to say, uh, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. You hear what he says? He uses a very um, key word here. So the manifestation of the Spirit. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, then out of that gift, the manifestation of the gifts come forth. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all, to profit the organization, to profit the kingdom. Verse 8, For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. He keeps saying it over and over again. Remember, brethren, by the same Spirit. All these are coming out of the one gift. The gifts are coming out of the one gift. Bless the name of Jesus. And so he said, verse 10, To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these work at that one and the selfsame spirit. Here Paul goes again. All these work it out of the one Gift out of the same spirit, out of the Holy Ghost. Bless the name of Jesus. Verse 12. For as the body is one, and at many members, I told you, Paul was so brilliant in his writings. Brilliant. For as the body is one, and at many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Verse 13 is so, you know, verse 13 get me excited. For by one spirit, verse 13 is getting me so excited. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. One gift. For by one spirit. Are we all baptized into one body? Whether we be Jews or Gentiles. Hallelujah. Whether we be born or free. And have been all made to drink into one spirit. And we are all made to be baptized. The drink means baptized. And we are all made to drink. And so we are, bapt we are, we are born by the water, the spirit. We are born by the water and we are born by the spirit. We are baptized in water, but we are also baptized in the Holy Ghost, the spirit. Bless the name of For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be born or free, and have been all made to drink in one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. Bless the name of Jesus. So, he goes on to say, you know, so if the foot, you know, start to bring cheeriness, you know, if the eyes start to, you know, Behave like, you know, I can do this by myself or, or, or the hands start to behave like, I can do this, you know, to save time with all the reading, you know, you know, then that would make any sense. All the gifts that came out of the gift is for one purpose, is to bring glory to the kingdom of God. Simply put, bless the name of Jesus. And so... It goes down to say, in verse 27, Know ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church, first apostle, 
secondary prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. And he started to ask a question. And this is where the trouble comes in, where um, I'm going to go, be going to that verse that show a lot of believers off. Paul says, in my own word, is all apostle? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? He's asking, is everybody the same? No. I don't have highs around here. These are not my eyes. My, these are my eyes. That's it. So not everything that you're seeing now is my eyes. Bless the name of Jesus. He says, Are all workers of miracles? Everybody in one church. Everybody has the same gift. Miracles and nothing else. No, that would not be good for the kingdom of God. No. Bless the name of Jesus. Verse 30 says, Have all the gifts of have all the gifts of healing. Everybody, all the remnant, the gift is healing. Do all speak with tongues. And this is where a lot of people said, No matter what he shows me in this word, what he's saying is wrong. Because the Bible says, not all, do all speak with tongues. Meaning that it, 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 the Bible make it clear. It, just as though it would not be good for everybody to be teachers only. It would not be good for everybody to have the gift of miracles only. It would not be good for everybody to have the gift of healing only. Then it would not be good for everybody to have the gift of speaking in tongues. But my brothers and sisters, in all the gifts, there's a difference with one of the gifts. And we have to be careful of going around in error. Because this gift, the, the, um, um, the gift of tongues, it's in the package of the gifts, but it is used for something else. It is used for something else. Bless the name of Jesus. And so, he says, But COVID earnestly the best gifts. G-I-F-T-S. Even the last... So at the beginning of verse 12, Paul made it clear, verse 1, that he's talking about the gifts, not the gift. And at the end... He finished it the very same. He's talking about the gifts and not the gift. Bless the name of Jesus. And yet, Paul said, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Paul says, I don't think I want to end right here. They have to be a continuation. So let's go down into chapter 13. Paul says, though I speak with the tongues of men. And of angels and of not charity, I am become a sounding brass or tinkling symbol. And so many I have many Seventh-day Adventist um, believers. We are good friends. You know, maybe there are those who would want to stand off on the channel. You know, but but they, you don't really know me like that. I I I am very good friends with my Adventist brothers and sisters. And there are times when we talk, but I try to avoid debate. But there, we, we, we share. And the, 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 the belief of the Adventist um, arena is that the, the, that, the, that the gift of tongues is, is only about is only about Spanish, French, Chinese, Japanese, um, English, Patois, all the different dialects, all the different languages, that's tongues. And so what took place in the upper room, you know, was all about those who are on the outside, heard everyone as they speak in their own language. 
God is very intelligent, my brothers and sisters. God knew that these apostles would be sent throughout the earth. Bless the name of Jesus. And so you did not have a school in those days that, 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 that teaches many languages so that when you as a guest goes to a hotel, there is somebody at the hotel to, to interpret what you're saying. The apostles who were unlearned, and the Bible made it clear, not all of them, but, oh God, Peter, they were, you know, they, they, it, it, it is written. Because at Pentecost, the people, when they heard them in their problem, they said, are not these unlearned men? Are these the same men? You know, or, or, or we class people at times. And so, it's not that, my brothers and sisters. It's not that only. Because our sister of mine said yesterday in, in the comment section, Sister Endure, she gave a very example. She was at her church. An African guy was about to commit suicide. He came into the church. She said she was there. And the Holy Ghost moved upon uh, a believer, a man in the back of the church. And he spoke in tongues the African language was warning the young man not to do it, not to take your own life. And it was an awesome Sunday, or whenever that, that took place. Yes, the, when we speak in tongues, the Lord will really use us. That's why you have diversities of tongues. Diversity of tongues. But as an Adventist or anybody who just believe that tongues are just basically Spanish and all over earthly language, then, then what would you do with 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1? You know what Paul says? Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. And of angels. That means that though I speak with earthly tongues, and do I speak with heavenly languages? Because if, if it is tongues of angel, that means that it's an heavenly language. And that is why when we go further into the word, my brothers and sisters, we will find where Paul tells us that when we speak in tongues, we speak direct to God. Okay, let me, let me continue. Um, so it says, read it for yourself. Um, in what, what Paul was basically saying in chapter 13, in not just tongues, any gift at all you have, if you don't have love, if you don't have charity, it profits nothing. That is basically what Corinthian is all about. No matter how anointed you are, no matter how you will even give your body, willing to give your body to be burned. I believe that that is extreme. Where you have a believer that would be willing to be burned at the public square for Jesus. But still did not have that love for his or her neighbor. It profits nothing. Let me continue. Um... This video, you know, to, to get this out there, it's, it's going to be a bit long. You know, I, I, I want to wrap it up. Verse, verse 14, it says, chapter 14. Paul says, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. G-I-F-T-S. But rather that he may prophesy. So, all the three chapters... You can see where Paul is all about the gifts. What these are the, 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 the diversities that comes out of the one. Promise. The gift of the Holy Ghost. Paul says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understand him, albeit in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. 
And so Paul was exponing on another way how this works. Because even though God can use you, you end up in China and God wants you to, to do a work in China. Through the Holy Ghost. We cannot limit God. We cannot put him in a box. Through the Holy Ghost, God can give you China language. God can give you French language. You have never learned French. And when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you are in France, God use you in the streets. If he choose to do so. Bless the name of Jesus. But here, Paul now was saying that we have to be careful. Because what was the problem is that many believers get carried away with tongues. Where they would want to, with it, because I've seen it. I, I was at a church service years ago when I was very young. And our church invited uh, a, 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 a pastor to preach. And right through the hour and a half, he was preaching in tongues. It's one of my worst experience in church ever. And all, the only time he says a few words that you could understand was to tell the congregation, you know, maybe this is where you can laugh, was to tell the congregation, nobody said anything, nobody, nobody say anything bad about me. Be careful. Nobody pass any remarks about me. Nobody remarks. This is the work of the Lord. And if you pass any dirt remarks about me, God will judge you. God is going to allow bad things to happen to you. And he continue on and on again with tongues. Right through the message. This is what Paul is talking about. Who does that profit? If we sit before a, a, a preacher all day, if I come and do a video with you and for 30 minutes I'm in tongues and I close the video with just by saying, please comment in the comment section and, 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 and make sure you subscribe. Give a thumbs up. What would be the, edify, the, the edifying of that video? I wonder what that comment section would be like. So this was what Paul was dealing with. Where things were not being done in decency and in order. And so Paul goes on to say, for time, that, 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 um, Paul, was, Paul goes on to say that, that if you, if you speak in tongues, make sure that there's an interpreter there. But what? That is when you're speaking to people. In the church, my God, we all cannot be having a conversation and everybody at the same time speaking in tongues. That's chaotic. That's confusion. And so anything for the church must be done in decency and in order. So one person is speaking, speak. But make sure that there's an interpreter if it is for the church. But if you're in a prayer meeting and I am down on my knees, everybody, we are going into a season of prayer. What's wrong if the Holy Ghost takes over and I'm in my prayer language? My brothers and sisters who are next to me, it's not your business to hear what I'm saying unto the Lord. I'm just saying, speaking unto God. Bless the name of Jesus. And so, verse 40 says, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit pray by my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. Bless the name of Jesus. Else when thou shalt bless the spirit, how shall he that occupy the room of the unlearned say amen and they given of thanks? Seeing the understanding, seeing he understanding not 
what he said. Verse 17. For though verily says stands well, but the other is not edified. I thank God. I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than ye all. Yet in church, I had rather speak few words with my understanding than by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Brethren, and I believe there's somewhere in the scripture that tells you that we are to pray that when we are even praying in tongues, we understand, uh, we, are, we can interpret also. Because, as I said, I need to do a video about our prayer language. Because it's something that builds you spiritually. When I read the book of Jude, there's a verse in it that says that, you know, in the last days, what is, what is going to take place? Jude was saying, telling us a way that we need to, he said, praying in the Holy Ghost as we built up our most holy faith in Christ Jesus. Building up our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, when you pray in your prayer language, it's another level. It takes you into different dimension. Bless the name of Jesus. If we're going to buckle demons, it's good when you have a prayer language. I'm telling you. Let us continue. Um, verse 20 said, Virgin, be not children in understanding, albeit in malice, be children. So don't be children in understanding, he said, but in malice. Yeah, you can be children. But in understanding, be men. In the law, it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto his people. So it is written. It is written that God is going to speak to other people through tongues. For yet all that will they not hear me, say the Lord. But again, that understand that. Is, is like what the sister said. The, 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 the gentleman got up in the back and he spoke. He spoke to that guy that was about to commit suicide in his language. You know why? The wisdom of God did not want maybe to embarrass the guy. Everybody in the congregation going to know that, you know, he's, he's, he's suicidal. And so what the Lord did was keep that private. If, if the guy wanted to reveal it to the church, Leave it up to him. And, and, and so everything has its place. But what we cannot do, my brothers and sisters, is to say that the sign, the evidence is not for all. The evidence is for all, my brothers and sisters. Verse 22 says, Wherefore tongues are for a sign, these are, not, these are not my words. Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. You hear that? When we are filled with the Holy Ghost, it's, a, it's for a sign to show that I am baptized with the Holy Ghost. It's the Evidence is written. Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serve it not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. So it's the other way around for prophecy. Right? And so I, I, I think that I'm running out of time. I don't really want to do a video beyond this what I'm seeing on my phone. So, all I want to close by saying is wherefore, Virgin 39, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak 
with tongues. But Paul closed off brilliantly. He said, let all things be done though in decency and in order. And there are some other stuff in Corinthians. These pastoral scriptures, you know, I'm not even going to touch them because sometimes I wonder how can people read these things and still function under the same. And I'll give you one example for you to read for yourself. Corinthians 14, and you can start to read from verse 32 down to verse 37. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Let us not deny what is before us. The truth is in the word of God. Tongues are for a sign. And we all need that move, my brothers and sisters. If we need to be ready. If we really need to be ready. Because suddenly, everything changes. And I pray we all be ready. God bless you. Talk back to me in the comment section. Love you all.